everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Bianca Collins. I'm the curator of public programs for the Fowler Museum at UCLA. Thank you for joining us today or tonight, depending on where it is you're tuning in from around the world. The Fowler is proud to present Carrie Burkle on Aboriginal screen printed textiles from Australia's top end as part of our Lunch and Learn series, which offers easily digestible explorations of charismatic objects from around the world. We're so pleased that you've joined us to chew on some sustenance and feed your mind and soul. Today, we are pleased to welcome Carrie Burkle artist, educator, and co-founder of Textile Arts Los Angeles, who will offer her insights about the methodologies, inspiration, and meaning behind select prints from Aboriginal screen printed textiles from Australia's top end. An instructor in pattern design and screen printing, Burkle will highlight aspects of design ideation, use of dyes and pigments, and pattern repeats in the production of screen printed yardage. Carrie Burkle is a visual artist and educator living in LA. She's co-founder of Textile Arts Los Angeles and a member of California Fibers. She received her BFA in textile design and MFA in fibers from California State University of Long Beach, where she has been teaching in the fiber program since 2002. Burkle has exhibited at Craft in America Center, Craft Contemporary, formerly known as Craft and Folk Art Museum, Visions Art Museum, Mingay Museum, Lipa Ratner Museum of Art, Downing Museum of Art, Collins Gallery, and University of Strathclyde, Glasgow, among other venues. Before we get going, I have a few quick technical bits of housekeeping. Once the screen sharing begins, I encourage you to click view options at the top of your screen and select side-by-side -side mode so the video feed doesn't cover any of the presentation. And if you have any questions during this program, please do submit them through the Q&A function found at the bottom of your Zoom screen. You can submit and upvote questions that you would like to be considered to be answered at the end of the program. All right, that's all from me. Over to you, Carrie. Thanks, Bianca. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Bianca Collins for inviting me to speak today. And I'd also like to thank Joanna Barkman for recommending me. Joanna Barkman is the curator of the exhibit as well as the editor of the award-winning catalog of the exhibit, Aboriginal Screen Printed Textiles from Australia's Top End. I met Joanna at the Fowler Museum before COVID hit, where we had a conversation about the exhibit and screen printing in general. And listening to Joanna talk about the Aboriginal, Aboriginal screen prints really piqued my interest. I teach a pattern design class, as Bianca said, and it will be 22 years come, it will be 20 years come 2022 since I've taught at Long Beach State. So thank you for having me. It is a privilege and a pleasure to showcase some of the extraordinary screen printed textiles on view in the exhibit. The Fowler gave me permission to use a limited number of photographs from the exhibit's catalog out of respect for the Aboriginal indigenous artists and their works. As you can imagine, it was such a challenge because there are so many exceptional works of art to present. The scholarship and research put forth in the catalog illuminate the sophistication of the artist, their design aesthetics, the engaging narrative behind their motifs and the geographical locations of the five art centers. I was also given permission by the Barbara Woman Center one of the five featured Aboriginal screen printing art centers to show their artist designs and screen prints. These additional images will provide and enhance a greater visual understanding of the narrative behind the motifs. Today's talk will focus on the several of these motifs and the rich stories they tell. To begin with, I'd like to briefly share with you the language of pattern design, pattern layouts, and motifs to better acquaint you with the rich and sophisticated Aboriginal screen prints. Let's begin by asking what gives pattern structure? On the left, we see a checkerboard pattern and on the right, we see a familiar looking puzzle. Both are made of contrasting tiles in colors of black and white. Both are tessellations where each side fits perfectly next to the other. Both illustrations are confined within a grid. Patterns have underlying structures 
and so many patterns fit within a conventional grid layout. Grids as structures are common. There are two important principles in pattern design, repetition and variation. Repetition is what makes pattern a pattern. Variation makes patterns visually pleasing. Variation creates interest. You've heard variety is a spice of life. So true in pattern design. In teaching pattern design, I emphasize the principles of design, especially variety. Variety in line, shape, scale, color value and contrast, and direction and movement of the design elements. You will notice variety showing up in the screen prints we are going to see. Besides repetition and variety, there are also three fundamental characteristics or attributes within pattern. They are structure, as seen in the grid. The second characteristic is scale. Scale relates to the size and proportion of the design elements within the structure. The third characteristic is coverage. Coverage is the overall spacing of the design elements or motifs and the relationship of the positive and negative design and space. Coverage is one of the most difficult challenges within pattern design. The pattern designer wrestles with coverage issues, too little, too much, just the right amount. The grid structures are important in creating patterns and together with motifs, they create something called a pattern network. A pattern network is based on a grid system or layout where the single element or motif is put into a repeat. What makes a pattern seamless is the ability of the singular motif to get lost in the overall network. We're looking at an example of one of my students' seamless pattern repeats. In this pattern exercise, the singular motif must show a balance of black and white when repeated. From this single motif, the student proves that it works seamlessly by connecting to all four sides in a continuous flow. The motif is placed in one direction. This directional constant is called a stack repeat. There are several other pattern layouts that create more interesting repeats. Now we're looking at the entire set of six pattern networks of a singular motif. Here we see that the negative space changes and creates interest between the positive and the negative shapes. From the confines of the grid, the motif shifts and reverses direction, creating all the wonderful variety you see within the positive and negative areas. The stack repeat is shown on the top left. A stack reverse is shown below it. And look what happens to the black and white shapes. Stack reverse layouts create stripes. By turning the direction and shifting the rows and columns of the motif, the exchange of the contrasting shapes changes. What makes pattern so engaging? Well, the heart and soul of pattern design is the storytelling inherent in the motif. It is my intent today to bring these motifs into focus and garner an appreciation for their narrative and the designs of the Aboriginal artists. Motifs are divided into five families. These families or categories generate a limitless, a limitless treasure trove of visual delight. The five families in pattern design are florals, geometrics, ethnics, meaning non-Western, conversational, art movements, and period styles. Today, we are focusing on the conversational family, but florals will show up too. Conversational motifs have content. Conversationals can be about any imaginal narrative that you can think of. Conversational motifs from the top end of Australia have a distinct and charismatic story to tell. Screen printing on textiles involves a design by an artist, a stencil, a screen, stretched with polyester mesh, a squeegee, a padded surface, and ink for fabric. To illustrate the printing process more fully, let's look at the print studio at Cal State Long Beach. As we move from the top left corner, down and over, we begin with the artist's design, which is seen here drawn in black. This is a photocopy of an original design drawn freehand without the age of digi digital tools. 
The drawing is made into a transparency called a film positive. Photo emulsion, it is, I'm sorry, it is placed on the back of a coated screen with photo emulsion. Photo emulsion is light sensitive and captures fine detail from a photograph or a drawing. The screen is placed either on a light table and exposed to UV lights or exposed outside in direct sunlight, which is one of the methods used at the top end. What the UV light does is harden the photo emulsion except where the black design has been placed. After the screen has been exposed, the screen is rinsed underwater. We use a very heavy wooden T-bar for our registration system, creating a right angle for the screen to align next to. The printing of the repeat is shown on the right. In this instance, the design fits into a small handheld screen, which is easy to squeegee by one person doing the printing. The, the single stencil is printed in two colors, as you can see by masking off part of the screen design, leaving a negative shape where the second color will go. All the steps require practice and patience. This design repeat was printed as a stack repeat, keeping the direction constant. I'd like to begin the story noting that the Aboriginal peoples are indigenous to the Australian continent. This map shows the geographical locations of the five Aboriginal art centers in the top end district located in the top center of the Australian map. I want to emphasize the stories of the artists from the top end are very much a part of their geographical location. The seasonal weather patterns, of wet and dry conditions influenced the way the Aboriginal top end peoples planted, grew and gathered their food. The land, the ecology and their culture are all defining features of the design motifs used in their screen printed textiles today. They reach back in time and connect to the stories of their ancestors. Out of the five art centers of note is the Barbara Woman Center solely operated by the women of Barbara. The center gave me permission to present some of the artist design motifs and screen prints that we will see today. In this photograph, we are looking at two screen printers at work, printing a large scale design motif called woven mats, printed in three colors. Three artists collaborated to create this wonderful design. The artists who design the motifs do not necessarily screen print the cloth. These large screens and squeegee take two printers and great strength to push the ink across the surface of the cloth. Screen printing can be quite labor intensive. I love the large scale motif, the layout of the repeat pattern and the color story. From this photograph, we can see how the color sequence was printed. First, a layer of white ink was printed. Laying down white ink will make the blue and green inks stand out from the background, creating visual greater depth and interest. Next, a color wave or split screen, the blending of blue and green inks placed next to each other on the screen was printed on top of the white. This process is an efficient method of printing two colors at once. I admire the simplicity and effectiveness of using one stencil to print in two colors, resulting in visual movement and depth. Now that you have an understanding of pattern structures and principles of design, printing methods, and a concept of motifs, let's delve into some of the designs and symbols that convey, that convey the rich stories of the Aboriginal artists from the top end of Australia. In this close-up view from the previous slide, I wanted you to see that inside the design motif of the woven mats, there are different twining patterns, giving us an absolute visual delight of artistry and skill. I want you to know that the three artists who design this pattern motif are also skilled fiber artists and weavers. You will see that in many of the designs come firsthand from the direct knowledge and experiences of the artists who designed the prints. 
I chose this spark painting done with natural pigments to illustrate that so many of the screen print designs we are looking at began as paintings on objects that tell the ancient ancestral stories of the Aboriginal people. The rectangular motif is painted with universal elements of lines, dots, and shapes radiating from the center in several colors of earth pigments. The spark painting called The Sky in the Upper World was done by an unknown artist from the Tiwi people on Melville Island prior to 1954. The spark painting tells the story of the monsoon season, the rains it brings, and the propagation of plants on the land all conveyed with symbolic marks. It is rich in content. This painting is evidence that human beings have a fundamental bond to nature and its rhythms. We make our experiences individual stories with the means we have at hand. We have a deep human desire to connect and communicate to one another through storytelling, using our graphic symbols. The spark painting is a record and evidence of this desire. I hope you are as enamored as I am with the motifs coming from the baskets woven from the palm leaves of the pandanus palm we are looking at now. Pandanus palms grow readily around freshwater ponds and are an important part of basket making and symbolism and the stories of the artists. On this page is a photograph of a basket woven with pantanous palm leaves dyed with natural pigments and strips of cotton cloth, which show up as thick lines interspersed between the woven structure. The basket as motif and subject is used in an expressive way to capture the story of basket making. We can see how the basket as a motif was used in the screen print. There are several types of baskets used for collecting and carrying food, trapping fish and so on. I admire the way artist Kylie Hall, who is 31, drew each basket, putting her own personality, emotion and animation into the drawing. Her skill of arranging the basket forms in this particular directional layout and the spacing within the repeat and the use of two separate stencils and colored inks is a record of her creativity as an artist. Her print is quite fabulous. Here we see evidence of several artists' interpretations of the dilly bag. A dilly bag is a practical bag used to collect a variety of heavy foods. It has a long attached string that is worn from the head. It is usually woven by twining natural palm leaves and vines. The drawing in the upper right corner depicts a special dilly bag, one that is woven with brightly colored orange parrot feathers. Sitting beside it is a digging stick, which you can also see in the other two drawings. The digging stick is used to dig up root vegetables and shoots of plants. It is associated with and a symbol of women's work. Women are the ones who use the stick. This special dilly bag would be used for ceremonial purposes. The dilly bag in the lower right corner has fine cross-hatched marks. These marks are a special purpose, said to capture the spiritual essence of Aboriginal religious beliefs. Those who have this knowledge of the mark can acknowledge its spiritual identity. I love the charisma and the charm of the dilly bag. Here are two illustrations of dilly bags from two artists showing the pattern design in full repeats. Artists must make sure the design will work in a repeat. This is called mapping and will tell the printers how to print the design. Each illustration shows how the layering of two colors will work. The repeat on the left looks like it is created with two separate screens. What draws my attention is the movement created by turning and the directionality of the basket motif, as well as the spacing. The repeat on the right is a clear example of offset printing. Offset printing can be accomplished by turning the direction of the screen or by slightly shifting the screen horizontally or vertically so the designs or layers 
do not match up. This overlaying or offset printing creates visual interest. Take a moment to enjoy the energy of these screen printers. Some Aboriginal printers have been printing textiles for well over three decades. As I mentioned previously, screen printing is labor intensive. It takes great strength in the upper body and hands to push the ink consistently across such a large screen as noted in the arms of the screen printer on the far right. I love the scale of the basket motifs in each design. In the bottom center photograph, we see how the dilly bag, bag is printed in two colors. We've explored the narratives behind circular woven mats, baskets, and dilly bags. Now let's look at how fish traps are incorporated into repeat patterns. In this photograph, four women artists are standing with woven fish traps. The fish traps are conical in shape and can be of different sizes up to six feet in length, depending on the location of fishing. Notice the scale of the fish trap held by the woman on the right. The three artists who collaboratively designed this repeat pattern incorporating fish traps are all experienced fiber artists and basket makers. They have firsthand knowledge of, bas of basketry techniques. And this print is a wonderful example of that knowledge. I counted 12 different kinds of fish traps this design made with two stencils. Capturing the shape of the fish trap with a simple outline, as well as using line to create the woven structure is a means in economy and a strength in design. The layout is compact and yet allows each of the fish trap shapes to be distinct. The artists know that the color contrast of white against the subtle value of gray creates depth and movement. It's a beautifully designed print. I really enjoy seeing the iterations within each of the motifs. Here are three more captivating examples of fish traps. I marvel at the variety of line and the drawing and spacing of the line to create the soft values. The artist who, create, who created these two striking prints is known for her black and white color palette. We've learned that weaving can take on dimensional forms as twine baskets and as flat mats. Here we have a drawing titled Weaving Story. The two baskets and circular mats appear to float in space, creating atmosphere. I think it stands out from the other prints because of of the perspective drawing and the picture scape. The far right layout repeat is a stack reverse. The design is turned in the opposite direction every other repeat. Typically, when a design is turned in the opposite direction, new units or shapes form as seen here. What is so marvelous and what I wanna emphasize here is the direct contact between the artist's skillful hand their personality and the medium, which has been a defining feature of these Aboriginal screen prints. The motifs come alive and are in a sense animated by virtue of the hand, heart and tools of the artist. We can delight at the skill of the artist painting such fine lines in this cross hatch pattern. The photograph on the right shows several artists collaborating on a dilly bag design, preparing it for the screen. The hand of the artist is captured in each basket. I think it's important to recognize that collaboration is an important effort done in the artwork as seen here and in the work of the printers. It's a real team effort. Quote, collaboration takes place across gender, race and expertise. While some necessary skills have been introduced by non-indigenous people with printing expertise, the creative impetus has remained indigenous. I see the artist's hand in this charming illustration. I love how the artist rendered each of the figures along this straight path and how the vine works to hold the figures together. It caught my eye right away. The title is Swordfish and Long Neck Turtle. 
I wanted to share it with you and the artist's description. Quote, my dreaming is of the long neck turtle. I like to eat long neck turtles. It tastes really nice. We catch them in dry and wet season near my home. This is my first ever design. I painted it with a brush at the Barbara Women's Center. And I feel proud when people print my design. So that is such a lovely story. And I love how it's printed in two colors on the right. Here is a view of the printing studio at the Maripin Arts, Culture and Language Facility. The artist and her helper are printing the second print run of the first screen for a design titled Yams. This completed four stencil print showing in the foreground is called a strike off. A strike off is a test print where all the design elements must, must be accurately registered. The registration is done by placing stops along the rail shown on the edge of the table. The stops are placed at the correct width between each repeat. Cheeky yams are an important bush food that are collected during the wet season. We have two very distinct design repeats of yams in this slide. On the left is a pattern repeat put into a toss layout. The yam motif is spread across the screen with the artist paying close attention to the spacing. The artist did a superb job of placement. There are no obvious negative spaces left unattended. The yam motif on the right is a complex porous stencil design that we previously saw in the last slide as a strike off. In this up close view, we can appreciate the packed layout of the design. It's a wonderful example of how a drawing can be put into a repeat pattern. It shows the sophistication and the knowledge of pattern design. When the background of a cloth is printed as we see here, the print is called a blotch print. The red we see here in this design in the background was actually printed with red ink. The design is seamless and fluid. I love the use of black outline as a detail defining the yams and leaves. The artist used the white of the cloth as a color in her design. The white creates character and illuminates the green leaves and orange yams. We can see how the design fits by looking at the very top edge in the illustration. In this bold and graphic print, also of cheeky yam, we see quite a different style. The strong vertical rectangles defined by the small enclosed triangles and symmetrical rows of small circles look to be symbolic of body painting done as part of an initiation ceremony celebrating young boys' rites of passage into manhood. This design also corresponds to the yam harvest at the end of the monsoon season in either February or March. The yams are a symbol and an extension of this rite of passage story. The artist was able to capture the symbolism of the bold body painting in a very abstract manner using geometric shapes with two colors, an ancient ritual captured in contemporized manner. Here are several views of the Mumeka plant and blossoms. This floral print falls in the floral family category. The pattern design of the Mumeka blossoms is composed in a tightly packed layout. The red blossoms fit neatly into the green stems with one small errant red blossom moving our eye upwards. It's a lovely detail and gesture of the artist. Mumeka plants grow near Mumeka Creek on the artist's homeland. This beautiful large flower blooms during the wet season. It has deep green petals with a central red kernel which swells to the size of a berry. Quoting the artist, it is known for its long swooping petals which seem to dance in the winds. And when I was painting this Mumeka story, 
I was painting in my head what I remembered. I was dreaming of being on my homeland, eating ripe humeca berries, end quote. I think the land is so much a part of the Aboriginal life as to define it. Maripin is the name of the sand palm. Look at how the artist has reimagined it in soft and shimmering golds on a black ground. The artist has thought about the triangular shape of the sand palm leaves and how they fit together, shifting vertically in a drop layout as if dancing on the vine. We see the palm leaves splayed out flat sitting fine. We see the palm leaves splayed out flat sitting above fine delicate dots like fine grains of sand. Although the artist used only two colors, look at how well they engineered the pattern design repeat. Notice how the softer gold sits on top of the deeper gold and how the small dots are arranged in two colors. I think it's exquisite. There is depth and movement with an economy of means. In screen printing this design, one stencil will hold the deep gold shapes and the other stencil would hold the softer gold shapes. So clever how the two stencil separations make up this rich print. The textile designs at Maripin are inspired by traditional stories and the vibrant local flora and fauna. I just love the scale of this print on the left as well as the illustration above it. Yak yak is a word from the Aboriginal language meaning young woman and young woman spirit being, sometimes compared to the European notion of mermaids. Yak yaks are usually depicted with the tails of fish. They have long hair associated with trailing blooms of algae. In the screen print on the left, the young woman spirit is drawn with turtles, lilies, and snakes, and quite large in scale, as you can see from the print below. The stories are exuberantly told and very large prints. How can you not be so engaged, so gorgeous and so beautifully designed? The two center prints show the artist used cross-hatching marks in a remarkable manner by breaking up the surface into geometric shapes and filling in each shape with marks that to me look like needle lace. On the right is a view of what the pattern repeat looks like hanging as a whole clock in space. Even though the artists depict ancient symbols and narratives, they have a wonderful sense of feeling and play in their contemporary interpretations. Mythical creatures and stories show up in many of the paintings and screen prints of the top end, as we previously saw in the story of Yak Yak, the young woman spirit. This print we're seeing was designed in 2011 and printed in 2018. It depicts the rainbow servant, quote, a mighty creature ancestor spirit in West Arnheim land. The rainbow serpent is a mythical creature about a python. The story says she is feared by Aboriginal people because they may be, may be devoured by her in punishment if they transgress traditional laws. This resplendent textile was purchased by the Fowler. In the artist's depiction, the rainbow serpent is coiled around a billabong along the right edge of the perimeter. A billabong is an Australian colloquialism for a water hole. The rainbow serpent is protecting various animals and plants that live in and around the billabong located near the artist's country. Inside this billabong is the northern snaked neck turtle and its eggs, eel-tailed catfish and a water lily. A male wallaroo stands at the edge of the billabong. The drawing captures the narrative of the rainbow serpent mythology. How does an artist depict steam rising from the warm waters of springs beneath the ground? The artist is conveying fog emanating from the springs the steam rising into fog has associations with creation ancestors. In this design titled Fog Dreaming, fog appears as rows of lines 
radiating outward in large concentric circles. The artist used a delicate brush to capture this abstract impression. I love the softness of the color palette and how it evokes a sense of solitude. The artist is allowed to depict these sites where the hot springs are located because she is a cultural custodian of the country. This role, which she inherited from her grandmother, requires her to oversee the care and performance of ceremonies and other activities that maintain the ancestral knowledge associated with these sites. In this vibrant print, the artist is retelling a memory of being laid in a basket as a baby. She tells us that her mother was a prolific basket maker and would weave baskets in the same colors that we see here. The baskets, natural materials from the sand palm and pandanus leaves are dyed in a boiling water dye bath from the soft orange pigments of the flowers from the coral tree and its roots. The basket makers use several different plants as dye sources for colored patterns in their baskets. I'm enchanted with the abstract depiction of this basket, which is the cover of the exhibition's catalog. This glorious multicolored print by renowned artist Daniel Mankara titled Stone Axe is set apart from the other prints we have been viewing so far. It is a single stencil design printed in black ink on a white silk ground. All the colors you see in this textile are painted in by hand using fiber reactive dyes. As your eye scans the surface of the print, make note that the colors are dispersed across the surface inside the shapes. The placement of the color with contrasting highlights of yellow, red, and green, readily move your eye in and out of the surface. It's quite an accomplishment of skill and mastery to know how to scatter colors so as not to create any specific area of focus. No two design repeats are colored in the same way. This is a great challenge and an accomplishment. Fiber reactive dyes, unlike inks, are absorbed into the fiber of the cloth and create a soft hand, which is what you expect in a silk fabric. The Tiwi people have used stone axes for millennia. This stone axe motif is a stylized drawing in simple geometric shapes. Its strength is the seamless layout designed by the artist. Wearing the printed textile designs of the artist makes the wearer feel connected to the land and culture. The designs we have had the pleasure in viewing today had many beginnings in ceremonial dress. So it is fitting that we conclude with the textiles adorning the body. Wearing these designs as prints is like wearing the embodiment of the ancestors. I think that's a wonderful tribute to all of the artists whose works we have had the delight of viewing in this presentation. There is a lovely quote and sentiment I'd like to end on today. It really captures the essence of what we've heard and seen about the Aboriginal people. Quote, anchored in a deep past and simultaneously cognizant of a deep future, these screen printed textiles seen on the world stage offer more than glimpses into the plants, animals, and experiences of the top end. They represent a resurgence that the rich cultural systems of this region will continue on the same steadfast, adaptive, responsive trajectory they have been on since time immemorial. So everyone and Bianca, Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me today. I would like to invite everyone to see the exquisite exhibit at the Fowler, which is on view now through June. I think you're going to be absolutely delighted. Thank you so much, Carrie. Wow, that was so incredibly illuminating. I so appreciate all of the 
time and energy you clearly put into that. It was um, so interesting to learn more about the works on view and the artists and the process for making these works. Thank you so much for that. It was my pleasure. <laughs> All right, so we have a couple of questions. We'll just um, answer a couple and then we'll get out of here. Um, okay, we have a question from Kim. Oh, I'm sorry, not Kim. There's someone who was asking about whether or not the people also print on paper. Um, and if you have any idea whether or not that's um, part of their practice. They do print on paper. I didn't focus it focus on that today because we wanted just to talk about textiles, but you can use the same kinds of inks, which are water-based inks to print on paper and textiles. And when you go to the exhibit, you will see some evidence of prints on paper. Awesome. All right, and then Christine had a question if this exhibit is now at the British Museum. No, it's at the Fowler Museum at UCLA. <laughs> and you can come check it out through June if you're in the area. It, it, the ex exhibit is beautifully installed and displayed. It's very, very beautiful. And I, I know that I'm a little biased, but it's gorgeous. I encourage everyone to come see it. All right, that's all we have time for today. Carrie, thank you so much again for um, that presentation and the time and effort that you shared with us today. Okay, Bianca, thank you for having me. Thank you, everyone. Yes, everyone, this program has been recorded. It will be available immediately on our Facebook and in a few days on our Instagram and Fowler website for you to revisit and share. We hope that you'll join us again for our next program. You can find details on the closing slide. See ya.